Hi, my name is Matsuri and welcome back to my channel where I view, rant and discuss about shows or movies that I've recently seen. And today's review is on Koi no Katachi or A Silent Voice. So this movie is really good at conveying like the feeling of being lost or you know the feeling of not being able to communicate and also the feeling of just being left out and like when I first heard about this movie I thought it was going to be like they made they portrayed it to be more of like a love story between the two main characters and although there is a bit of a love story in this movie I think the overall message that you know they are trying to convey is what depression and and social anxiety looks like but they did it in such a beautiful way that it was hard not to feel something if that makes sense so for those who haven't seen it or are thinking of seeing it here is a rundown of the story We see our main character, Shoya Ishida, try and take his own life, but instead finds himself walking to a community centre that teaches sign language. He wanted to apologise to a girl he had bullied in the elementary school. We get a flashback to when he was in elementary school and we see Shoya living the best life, playing with his friends and being the centre of attention. When one day Shoko Nishimiya, a hearing impaired girl, gets transferred to their class. At first they are nice to her helping her out as much as possible until they start getting annoyed that they have to help her or repeat what they have to say. Even though she is getting left out, Shoko still smiles and tries to keep up, which then annoys Shoya, who starts bullying her and taking her hearing aid, throwing it everywhere. Eventually this catches Shoko's mum's attention and she calls the school and the class gets interrogated by the principal and everyone singles out Shoya as the main culprit. When Shoya tries to explain that it's not just him and that the girl started it, he ends up becoming the target of harassment from the class. We see that Shoya finally sees that his harassment towards Shoko leads his mum to apologise and give money to Shoko's mum. He feels guilty for what he's done. Unfortunately, Shoko ends up transferring to another school, but the harassment towards Shoya continues, even throughout middle school. We flash forward to present day when Shoya is all alone thinking that this is karma for what he did in elementary school. Because of this, he starts getting social anxiety and he can't even look at people's faces. He feels like he shouldn't be given a second chance, but seeing as Shoko still wants to be friends with him, he starts opening up to her and eventually opening up his heart. So, like I said, this movie was really good at showing what depression and anxiety looks like through... Shoya, you know, was the bully and then he became bullied in the end and because of that, you know, he's he can't trust people he, and it's just frustrating not to be able to communicate or like be happy about yourself kind of thing. And on the other side, we have Shoko who, you know, because of her hearing, we later on find out her hearing is getting worse. And it's also something that, you know, you can still understand how she feels so isolated, not being able to fully communicate or convey what you feel, and the feeling of just being just alone. And I just love how Kyoto Animations was able to show Kyoko's emotions as she slowly goes into depression. So there's two scenes that are really notable and one of them was Shoya was talking to another girl and once she leaves Shoko's like oh what were you guys talking about because she couldn't hear it. Shoya just nonchalantly just says oh it's nothing don't worry about it and it cuts back to Kyoko but she has this like sad smile on her face like she understands like it could be nothing but it would be nice to know what they were talking about. And so there's this other scene where she's trying to communicate with her voice, but as you know, it, if you're not prepared to hear a particular sound or like a particular voice, it kind of like 
throws you off a little bit. So when she does speak to Shoya with a with his with her voice, he he just kind of freaks out a little bit and asks her to sign language because he can't understand her properly. So that makes her ask, "Oh, is my voice weird?" To him, to which he just nonchalantly says, "Yes, it's weird." And you can see the shock on her face. The reason why I'm talking about these two scenes is because later on there is an incident that happens which I won't say because it's a bit of a spoiler. The first time I watched this movie and I saw that incident happen, I wasn't quite sure why he did it. Like I understood her dilemma of not being able to hear and so because of that she feels really isolated and you know she was having a hard time like you could tell that she was having a bit of a dilemma but she was also seeing like she was fine if that makes sense and so when that incident happens I found it a bit of a shock I was taken back a little bit because I didn't see that coming but now watching it again for this review and I saw those two emotions I understand now more that that was her slowly going into depression and that that's kind of what led into that incident later on because even though she does like this guy he doesn't understand her so again it's that whole feeling of being not being able to communicate not being able to say how you feel it just makes her feel so alone that he doesn't understand and even though she's trying her hardest to you know be happy to make sure that everything's okay you know one comment can always push you over the edge and so i think those two scenes was kind of like the catalyst that kind of pushed her towards what happens later on and I'm not saying that Shoya is a bad person like he's a, actually a good kid in this he just doesn't understand what she's going through and I think that's the same with everyone who doesn't understand when people suddenly take their own lives like the amount of times you hear people be like oh why did they kill themselves it's like, well, you don't know what happened in their life. You don't know what comment they heard that pushed them over the edge. You don't know what, you know, world they were in when that happened. So if you're asking why, why didn't you help them? Like, why weren't you there to help them? Like, it's, it's one of those kind of things. Like I said, it's this movie really made it more understandable about like how depression can come about which is why I thought it was really really beautiful that Kyoto Animations was able to show those two emotions and on the flip side with anxiety we have Shoya who you know was on top of the world you know when he was young he had the friends and everything and then suddenly they you know backstabbed him made everyone turn on him and then we also see that even in middle school his his true friends were the one that kept on bullying him made sure that no one talks to him made him feel so alone that he's he just shuts down his heart which which is why he tried to you know end his life but I feel like for Shoya, the reason why he didn't end up going through it, although he kind of said it was because he wanted to at least apologize to Shoko, I feel like one of the reasons why he didn't actually go through it was with his because his mum. Because his mum is someone, his mum is shown to be someone that was very understanding of him, you know, cares about him loves him to bits so if he wasn't there i reckon the movie would have been over at the start he would have just you know taken his own life because if there was no one in his corner 
what was his point of living, if that makes sense. Now, I love the way how they showed his anxiety through the fact that all his friends in high school, or all his classmates, or everyone in his school has a cross in their in front of their faces, because it's a way to show that you're not like you're not completely saying that you can't see their faces, but you can't physically look at their faces if that makes sense. Like in your mind, you know they're there. And I also like how once he does open up to you know, make friends, those crosses slowly fall off. Among these crosses you have that one person that you trust and you see their faces. And like I said, it was a really good representation of that. So yeah, I mean, like I said, this movie is was really beautifully shown what depression and anxiety looks like. Although this is it this isn't a complaint, but I didn't like how they promoted this movie as kind of a love story when although there is the main focus is it on the love story because when I saw like the trailer for this I was under the assumption that you know it was about you know two kids you know the boy teasing the girl because he actually likes her kind of thing and it just went too far and then eventually in high school they get together again and they fall in love because that's what they kind of promoted it as but if that's the case I wish there was a little bit more of a love story but because that's not what the main focus is I wish that they didn't really go with that if that makes sense they should, I feel like they should have gone more with the whole you know depression anxiety and everything like that although I wouldn't know how they would show it but I just feel like making it into a love story was a little bit misleading either that or my standards for like romantic movies are really high because that's what I thought about given as well but you know <laughs> Now my favourite character is Yuzuru who is Shoko's little sister because although we are introduced to her she's a bit like she's a little bit standoffish but it's because she cares about her sister. Like she knows her sister went through all this crap when she was little and she knows you know how sad and isolating she is and she just tries she just wants to be there for her sister but she knows just her alone won't be able to help her sister so even though she hates Shoya at the start she understands like slowly he also because of the incident has dealt with a lot of pain she, she slowly comes to accept him as someone her sister might like she needs him to help her through the pain if that makes sense with her attitude she also helps him get out of his you know anxiety and helps him you know make more friends as well so she just ends up becoming kind of like a helpful little sister to both characters i also like her because she just you know she speaks her mind like she's not afraid to say what she wants to say and she's just a bit of a badass although she does have her problems as well which we find out towards the end she's just a bit of a badass and I really like her now should you watch it I would recommend having a box of tissues with you when you are want to watch it because there is a lot of emotional scenes in there like I said the animation is really beautiful like just look at this scene them just in the train like it's so beautifully drawn and like i said they're really good at showing the emotional bits the subtle emotional bits as well so keep an eye out for that but yes this movie does deserve to be watched so i do recommend it but yes leave me a comment have you seen it before and if you haven't, did my review make you want to see it? <laughs> but, um, please subscribe for more reviews and rants coming soon. Give me a like if you can and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.